Number 18 then, the last question in the 2017 Advanced Higher Maths. Seven marks here for parametric equations. You've got the spiral defined by these parametric equations. But what it's actually asking for is not what you might expect, the gradient at a point on it. It just wants for five marks an expression for the instantaneous speed of the particle. Now, that's in the course. In the higher, you had the relationship between distance, speed, which was rate of change of distance, acceleration, which was rate of change of speed. The only difference in the advanced higher was you moved into two dimensions. That's what happens here. As this particle travels along that spiral, it has a speed which is in the direction along the path, but it's made of two components. There's the x component of the speed, differentiate this part, and the y component of the speed, differentiate that part. So that at this point here, it's heading back a little bit. I'll just exaggerate it. That would be the x component of the speed, differentiate it with respect to time. We'll just call that x dot. That's a notation for differentiate with respect to time. It's got a speed in the y direction. We'll call that y dot. The resultant speed along the path is just the vector produced by those two components. The magnitude of that vector will just be given by Pythagoras, and that's all they want. So, the first part would be differentiate them with respect to time. So, dx by dt, or you could write x dot. That's a neater notation. Will be, now it's a product rule. So it's going to be one, I'll put it in anyway. One times, I'll leave that alone, cos t. Now leave the t alone, and that'll be negative, so it'll be minus t times sine t. We'll just take that out now, because that's a bit messy. And similarly for dy by dt, or you could write y dot, that'll be 1 times sine t, which is just sine t, and t times differentiate sine that goes to cos t. Now that seems a fairly obvious start, but in fact, they're throwing the marks at you here. You're getting three marks for doing this. Three of the five marks just for, is just for doing this. It says evidence of using the product rule. You thought it would have said knowing to differentiate, but it says evidence of using the product rule. And then you're getting one each for these two derivatives. I suspect here maybe this question wasn't done too well and they've readjusted the marking scheme to try and give marks somewhere because you would think that's an obvious standpoint. That should just be like one mark for that part. But once you've got the two components, there's only one bit left to get this velocity. And it's the speed you want, which is just the magnitude of that. You're not interested in its direction. So, so that speed will be given by, it'll be the square root of these two components squared and added. I'll just put that part down to begin with. Could write x dot all squared, but I'll not put this down. dx by dt squared plus dy by dt squared. Didn't need to put that down. You could have gone straight in with the square root of these two parts. But... If you put this down, you get a mark for that. And then just feeding them into this gives you the final mark. That's why it looks as if they're just throwing it at you. So that means the speed's given by, now it's going to be a much longer expression because I've got to put these two parts in. So it'll be dx by dt, which is cos t minus t sine t squared, dy by dt, so that's sine t plus t cos t squared. Now they're actually giving you the last mark for this. And in the marking scheme, it says simplifying this is not actually required. Well, that's just nonsense, of course, isn't it? It must have been it was a badly performed question and they're just looking for ways to give out marks. Now, what does that lot come to then? Since they'd have put in this big square root, I could have avoided that all just by putting s squared until I had it nice and neat. Then I can throw the square root back in. Well, what you can see with the pluses and minuses, what's going to happen here is these two brackets here, when you square them, are going to produce very similar results with sine squareds and cos squareds. So anyway, we'll just multiply it out. So for the first one, square the first, twice the product, 2t, I'll just put it in the order of sine t cos t. Square the last, t squared sine squared t. This one, square the first. Actually, it might be better to put it underneath here because these pairs are going to match up here plus twice the product, 2t sine t cos t, plus square the last, t squared cos squared t. 
Now there's no marks for any of this, but there should have been, but there's not. Now look, it all pairs up. Cos squared plus sine squared. I'll just write it again. I'll just show them matching up. Presumably this is what they were looking for. Cos squared plus sine squared. These two terms, of course, cancel out. And then with these two terms, there's a common factor of t squared, which I'll take out, and you're left with sine squared plus cos squared. And sine squared and cos squared comes to 1. Sine squared and cos squared comes to 1, so that's just 1 plus t squared. Which means finally the expression for the instantaneous speed is the square root of 1 plus t squared. That's where the final mark should have been. And this mark should have been in here for putting that part into it. However, they had that there and that there. Part B for two marks. What's the instantaneous speed of the particle at point A? Well, you just need to know what's the value of t there. Well, what do you know about the point A? There's something that identifies it quite readily. It's on the x-axis, so I know that at A, y is equal to 0, which means t sine t equals 0. So that means either t is 0 or sine t is 0. I, mean, I thought that may have been the first mark just for getting these two parts. No, but they wanted to work out a couple more bits. This particle, that's t is 0 there. Then it crosses at once. After that, another time, another time. It's like the fourth time it's on the axis. So that's no use. It'll be the ones from the sign here. They'll produce the results. So when is sine t equal to 0? 0, pi, 2 pi. 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on. 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on. Now you get the first mark, soon as you start realising it's beyond 0. So the answer will be, it's the fourth time, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, it's at 3 pi. At a, t equals 3 pi. Running out of room a bit, which means the speed at that point is going to be the square root of, just leave it in the exact form, which is 1 plus the squared, 1 plus 9 pi squared. There it is.